everyone. Uh, I've had a lady out from Singer today who is so helpful. Um, I've only been embroidering for 18 months, so I don't profess to know it all. In fact, I probably only know about 1% of what there is to know. Um, but she gave me some really lovely tips. Um, I'm certainly finding it helpful and um, my machine is sewing better. So I wanted to pass them on to you guys. Um, in case some of you are having trouble like I was uh, with hooping, stabilising, stitching and so on, nesting, you name it. Uh, so we've got the basic 6x10 hoop. Um, I have a rubber pencil topper that I've cut into three. Uh, my friend Tammy um, suggested it to me. Uh, I have arthritis and I can't tighten up um, the hoop as much as you can. And I don't like to use a screwdriver because that pushes it too far. So this is really handy to do um, and I love using it. Um, so we just get some basic fabric, just a bit larger than the hoop. So probably about an inch round. Not, not, you don't have to use too much more. Um, try and put it in sort of fairly evenly, no stabiliser. Um, and at this point, can I just tell you that this is not for when you're doing um, freestanding lace, obviously. Um, you have to hoop the stabiliser with the uh, freestanding lace, um, which I actually didn't think about. <laughs> so just in case you're like me, um, there you go. So this is only for when you're using fabric. Uh, so we put the hoop on, make sure it pushes all the way down, uh, so that's all nice and tightly in, Just turn it as far as I can. Um, now she also said that a lot of people will, to get the fabric tight, will pull it and as they pull it, which I've done, up pops the hoop, drives me crazy. So what she did say was you pull inwards both sides at the same time otherwise you get this skewy fabric and then when you unhoop it's going to be all off so both sides at the same time just pull in and then do the ends as well both sides and I'm not kidding you you are left with a really good tight drum um, as I said there's no stabiliser and you're probably thinking what, what's she doing um, I've heard of floating fabric but um, she said, leave the stabiliser on the roll. Don't take it off. Don't cut a whole sheet of stabiliser. And you'll find out why uh, in a moment. So I just put it behind the machine. Make sure it's going to be out of the way of this bar that's going across. Um, put the hoop in, as usual. Oops. That's it locked in. And then just put the stabiliser underneath, slide it underneath, making sure it goes under, like so. Now you don't need to bring it all the way down past the hoop, because you're only going to embroider probably to around there. So I bring it down to be in line with the edge of the hoop on the inside. Uh, make sure it's sort of fairly covered. And then you're ready to stitch. Um, so I'm going to put a design in and then I'm going to show you another tip in a moment um, that she gave me uh, for giving you a really nice neat back um, and then also you'll go on to see what you do with the stabiliser afterwards. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay so now we're ready to sew. Um, I've put a design in that's for a 5 by 7 hoop. I'm using my 6x10 because I have a 4x4 four four or 6x10. I've moved the design so it's towards the bottom half of my fabric um, and the hoop to save on a stabiliser. One thing I found that I used to be a bit scared of the speed um, when I started and I used to put it on the lowest speed to start off and I kept having problems with nesting and so on. And um, Jane from Singer UK said to me, I didn't need to, that on the Futura XL400, you have the word speed. And if you put the, the little line under P, that's a really good speed to go at. Um, and you shouldn't have too many problems. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. It's about mid, mid speed. So if you have a different machine, I, I guess about mid speed. Uh, so you start there. Um, the other thing was the bobbin thread. 
Um, the back of mine used to be quite messy, um, and I used to have to snip, snip, snip everywhere, and all the jump stitches. Um, when Jane told me to bring the bobbin thread up and through the design, which was quite, um, quite a good idea. So I'm going to do that in a moment, but I'm going to have to zoom in so that you can see that. But once she finished, she showed me the back of, of this that she stitched. Now, excuse the dodgy camera work, but I, I need to sort of see where we are in, if I look over the back. But that's the design that she did. And if I turn it over, she did not need to cut any stitches at all. And it's so neat. And that's just by bringing the bobbin thread up through the fabric to start with. You only have to do it at the start. And, and that's it. Um, so I shall zoom in. And hopefully, I do apologise for the bad camera work. Really could do with a cameraman. Where's my husband when I need him? Um, so hopefully you will see this. I'm losing the light thread really, so it's not the best. But you've got quite a good length of thread. You hand turn the needle down. And you pull the thread and up comes your bobbin thread. So I just use tweezers to pull it through. And that's it. So you've got the bobbin thread and your top thread, which you want to make longer. And um, I will snip them a little bit. And again, what I was doing was holding on for dear life. <laughs> frightened that it was going to do something nasty and she said hold on to it but then just let go I know some machines out there super duper like some of the brother machines I've seen demoed you just leave it and where you go you probably can do that with some of the singers but but Jane did actually say that it is best just to hold on to the start and I need to send the design that would help wouldn't it uh, um and I'm ready to go. Okay, um, you'll probably notice a change in the lighting um, from when I last left this to stitch. That's because it's been about 10 hours and it's now 2 a.m. in the morning or some such. Um, so the design is finished. So this is where we show you the reason for stabilizing the way we did it. Um, not in the hoop, but under the hoop. Take the design off and we've got the design in this portion of the frame so we're going to cut the stabilizer down where the design starts and the bobbin thread so we've actually only used this much stabilizer as opposed to what I would have originally used in using a whole sheet. Um, so it's really going to save a lot of money on stabilising. That's the back of the design. That's the front of a pretty little flower design. Um, my first stitch out with my newly repaired machine. Uh, so yes, I'm pretty pleased. Um, but I think that's a genius idea, to be honest. And it does work. The design has stitched beautifully. Um, so yes, that's how we have the new stabilising methods, um, and I hope you like it. Give it a go, it's worth a try, isn't it? Thanks then, bye. Very remiss of me, I forgot to show you the front of the design, doing the bobbin thread the way we did it, by pulling it through to the other side, and the back of the design. No extra loose threads. Isn't that just fabulous? Love it. So, that concludes the video.